Hello, just a few minutes late, but I made it. It's chaos and mayhem at the home front here. I have showed you some volumetrics in a previous cut and a little face framing, face shaping. So that's a tiny little recap. I don't know if I, I won't try to get this on. So what we're doing today is we're gonna do a little diagonal going back. So today is a fun little thing. A lot of the stuff we've been doing are square shapes and today this is gonna be a round shape, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Again, Instagram is failing me. I pushed play. Okay. So we're here. This is Dina Von Yokes with Von Savvy Hair Academy. And today we're gonna to be talking haircutting. I like to do little savvy sips on color and I like to do savvy sips on cutting. And this is all for the love of hair. Being that we are still salon shut down, we're gonna make lemonade out of lemons because this is what we do. We have a choice. We have a choice between being positive or negative. And I'm not going to conform, I'm going to transform. So I'm gonna take this time to share information and let you know what I'm about. And what I'm about is advanced education in the salon industry. And I am going to give back any way that I can to this time that we have found on our hands and put it towards education and sharing information and education. So previously, this was a, a in the originally, I'm transitioning between haircut, haircut, and haircut. So we did a lob and we did a soft layer. And then now we went to the front and we did some tapering around the face and we took some weight off the top doing a technique that we call volumetrics. This is a previous cut also. So what I'm doing is not a whole entire cut, I'm talking techniques and cutting so that we could technically and logically move around the head and change our mind as we change sections if you would like. But regardless, you can take every bit that you're learning and it's not a haircut, it's a method in cutting. And we've been doing a lot of square layers and some diagonal forward layers and even the perimeter, the foundation we've been doing diagonal and square forward. So what I want to do is a little bit going back. We did do a little tapering around the face that was a 45 degree finger angle. I did not style her hair. I did not dry her hair on both sides. That's air dried, air dried. And the reason I do that, I could go in and I did do a little wrapping originally, but it's been wet and cut so much more since then. And you can see there's a little bit of wave in the hair, but we took out a lot of weight, got a lot of shape, a lot of softness. But I want you to see that you can create any hair design that you'd like. And I want you also to see the raw shape in the hair without me manipulating it with product and or brushes. So that's what's going on over here, lob. The back section was way back two weeks ago, curled, that curl's still there, the layer's still there, and then we created a different shape using the same doll head, the same length, tapered it around the face, took weight off the top by doing a technique called volumetrics. Today, I'm going in and I'm gonna start around, I should do the shorter side so we can preserve the doll head. I'm trying to get as much use out of it as possible. I'm gonna do where my, hand, my knuckles are up and my fingers are down, and I'm gonna travel section to section around this side of the head. And I know I've committed to only making these brief, simple, savvy sips cutting techniques, but I sometimes things take longer than others. And we're gonna start in the front this time. A lot of haircuts traditionally get started in the back. And some haircuts you can start in the front. And this is more of a pixie style. And again, you're gonna see when I come back on Monday, I'm not gonna blow dry her hair either. And then I'm gonna show you a wrap blow dry. And also how we're gonna cut the top. So, I'm gonna section the whole top 
and it's along the parietal ridge. Keep that sectioned away. And hold, please. Just got to get a couple of clippies. Normally I have my little pouch on and it takes a second to get it latched. And we've had a lot of action in the house this morning. So I wasn't able to get myself all set up the way I prefer to. So it's all about sectioning, right? And I'm gonna go in quickly and I'm just gonna show you that we're sectioning, if I was to do it on both sides, it would be from the crown section and I would section it off to the front, which is along the parietal ridge. You can even call it a mohawk section. And when I would cut a whole shape and a whole entire haircut, I would do that on each side keep the top section off and we're going to start in the front of the haircut this time instead of in the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the first section and that first section is what's going to determine the rest. We're going to follow that finger angle, that elevation and that over direction all the way through the haircut and the finger angle is going to be diagonal going back. So I'm gonna take thin sections, and this is how you don't lose yourself in the haircut. Now I just have to decide, am I cutting from this side? And you guys will be able to see, or that side. And that is always the important thing, is that, great, I'm cutting hair, but can you see it? So I'm gonna do a thin section, and each section I would do the same thickness or thinness and I'm going to direct it out. I'm cutting palm to palm. I want to get that little hair that's smashed against her face. It's going to drive me nuts if I don't. And you can section, keep everything neat and tidy and only concentrate on one section at a time. And my, I'm going diagonal back. My fingers are down and my knuckles are out. And I'm gonna go straight out from the head and slightly direct that first section back. And what you wanna really do before you get started on this very first section is you want to make sure that you've determined how much hair you're gonna take off. So that's going diagonal back. If you were to use a marble going down the comb, that's back. Diagonal forward would be going this way. So that's our first section. And now this is going to be a round layer and you're gonna follow it all the way through the haircut to the center back. And so today I'm gonna to be cutting the side section to the back for you, with you. And then we're gonna come back on Monday and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut the top. So I'm literally gonna do one section and then there'll be two section up here, and then there'll be three section connecting the front to the back. So I'm gonna have a plan, and it's in an organized manner, and it's gonna be one step at a time. So the next section, it's great to keep the hair away so that you don't get all, and it's, I think it's personal preference. You can cut from the bottom up or the top down, and I would say I'm gonna start from the bottom up here and bring it on through and subsection. So you gotta keep really elevated. And I have my doll high enough so that we can see the camera. So I'm elevating, I got her higher than I would normally have a client or my chair. But most importantly, I want you guys to be able to see. So now I want you to pay attention the more I over direct my first section back the more it's gonna keep softness on the face. So this is something you wanna determine before you get started. And then the second thing is, how close do you want a, a nice one finger's elevation from the head? Or do you wanna come out a little further? Or a little further? Or a little further? Or a little further? This is going to go into a round layer. So you want to determine the length of what the rest of the haircut's gonna be on the very first section is the most important section because you're gonna follow that all the way through the entire front to back. And I am at home and we do have gardeners in the neighborhood. I've got 
my studio set up in a garage just to give you the idea of what's happening here. So you will hear, hear a blower, a lawn mower, who knows? But we don't care. And I got a dog that wants to come out here with me. So it's just gonna be one of those mornings. So this is my third section. And what I've chosen to do is to take my previous section and use it as my guide into my next section. And what I am doing is really small ones, really thin, paper thin. And you can see your guide right there. So I'm over directing that second section into my third section. And that is what's gonna make me consistent all the way from front to back. Got it? So when you comb down, you can see this is round. It's not square. And you can see I left a little fringe right here for softness. And now we're going into our fourth section. And literally, you're gonna carry this all the way around the head. You're following the same angle, your finger angle, your elevation, your over direction. So my finger angle, I'm elevating straight out of the 90 over the section. I'm bringing the previous section back to the section that I'm gonna cut. Hi everybody, you guys are amazing. Elena, I'm giving you an award, and Monique, you're right behind there, and so is Melissa. You guys, when this is all said and done, I cannot believe you guys don't miss anything. And then there's a Mikey and a Michelle. Thank you all for joining. I'm very excited that to see that we're that committed to education. So you can see I'm directing back the previous section and I'm elevating straight over from where the hair grows, where the hair lives. So we're basically on base, if you remember those words from beauty school. So we're gonna keep traveling all the way back, all the way back till we get to the center. And what you would do if you're doing a, a complete haircut is you do the exact same thing on the opposite side, but instead of your fingers going down, they're gonna go up where your knuckles are in towards the head. This situation, my knuckles are away from the head and my fingertips are pointed into the head. Good morning, or morning, it's not morning. Good afternoon, Melissa. I gotta keep catch catching myself. So diagonal going back. And I've had it where people say, can you go straight down at a 90 with this haircut? My poor doll head, she's bald right there. Um, the thing of changing your finger angle, your elevation, your over direction, you can always do that anytime. That's just creating a different effect. I want to make sure y'all can see. Hello. There's my mama who is the guru of hair cutting since the 60s. My doll's a little blotchy right here. I've been doing all kinds of things on her to play with hair color, each section. Some we did rootage, some we did not, some we baby lighted, and some we highlighted. So now you're going to see this, her previous haircut. So think of this as real hair behind a chair. Her previous haircut was um, cut underneath a box cut, and then the long length was sitting over the top. So say that this was a client who all clients have previous haircuts, right? So I'm dragging that previous section into my most recent section I'm cutting. So this is another time where you could change your finger angle. I'm going steeper with it because it was shorter here from her previous haircut. Or if you have a client that wants more length and softness on the head, you would just bring your fingers, you can change your angle going straighter or even angling it out and that'll make it fall longer to the nape of the neck. So these are things, just being methodical and technical. We're still being technical, but this is a good point where you can change your fingers and that changes the whole haircut. And we keep talking about this. One degree can change the entire haircut and make it a custom design for this client for her hair growth and the pattern that we're working with on her head. And you know, this is a doll head, so they're a lot easier to give, you know, the shapes and designs to without worrying about calyx. I've had literally clients that literally their entire hairline grows to one side 
or the other side or everything swoops up down the middle and you got the tail in the middle. Does everyone know that one? I'm sure that's my hairline. So when you have that, you want to pay attention to the fact that there are growth patterns and everybody has different patterns and you want to assess the patterns of growth on the hair and the head, what the hair is doing on the head shape before you get started so that you don't get yourself into trouble because otherwise you're like, oh, I'm just gonna do this haircut I learned. And if you don't take into consideration what hair you're working with, cause some kick way high and some swing to one side, just assess it and then put a plan together on how you want to either use that pattern to make the haircut more creative or you want to do something to make sure that piece of hair doesn't pop out. Hello, Arturo. There's our hat designer from Los Angeles. I run the hat contest in Del Mar. I'm praying that we'll have it this year. And we just may not because, you know, we're not allowed to be around people. So it's usually in July. And we, um, Arturo Rios is an amazing hat designer that you know, he's designed hats for Lady Gaga and all that, and he so graciously lets us use his beautiful designs. And you should check out on my feed as you go way back from to now to last July, you'll see lots of hat designs. The majority of them are all his. So in this case, I'm gonna start from the bottom up because you see that shortest piece? Now that's gonna be used as my guide for the bottom. And then I'm taking, I'm pushing that one section I previously cut back, and you can see right there. And I'm following it all the way through. So there's, it's going to be slightly longer up here, and then it's going to take on and go round down here. So this is the fun part. When, how I overdirected the front back and cut it, it made it fall long to the face, and it kept it soft and feminine. So this is a way to do a pixie haircut where you can still keep softness around the face and the rest can be cut really short. So it still looks very feminine. This is also a great round layer that you can do on a man's haircut and go more masculine. So you would just go shorter at the hairline. Okay, so now we're taking it on from the top all the way down to the nape of the neck again. And you can see this is all re really short and it's, but if it was long, you still want to follow that all the way through. But now that it's short, I'm using that as my guide to direct me onto the length that we're going to have going upwards. But can you change the angle? Absolutely. You could do 90, you could do outward 45, you can go a steep 45 inward. Everything has to be taken into account. And this is a perfect example of what doing real hair behind the chair is like. You're gonna have clients that come in that have a previous cut. So you see how I'm pushing the previous section back into the section I am now cutting. So that allows me to direct it straight over and out 90 from the head. And I always like to calm everything down. When you're done, this is the thing that always, you guys might be going, I don't love how the side is. This you can go point cut and leave it super long and do an arching around the ear. But I like to have that discussion, leave it alone and we'll cut it all when it's dry. That can go into the dry cutting. And when we go um, into the back top section and the front section on Monday, I will show you how we can change the angle and have it fall long towards the face. We could uh, change the angle and disconnect it, the top from the bottom. So there's so many fun ways, but the, the key is, is like we're, we're choosing and we're really being precise on what it is that we're doing and creating and we're being on purpose by knowing our elevation, our over direction, and our finger angle. See, when you get through here, that was more squared off because it was a box haircut below. And now I'm rounding it. So you're seeing now I've got a little length I'm working with as I go towards the center of the head. 
and I'm subsectioning. I cut between my fingertips and my knuckle and I keep bringing it up, but I'm not dropping my elevation. I'm giving, keeping it straight out, straight out, straight out. And you will see a little bit of a weight line up here when you get to the top, because in this case, that's where I'm leaving and I'm angling, so that would cause it to be a little longer and it's gonna fall shorter as I'm tapering towards the bottom, directed downward to the nape of the neck. I hope this is helping everyone. We're almost done with this section. If you're at home and you get to do it and you have a doll head, like this girl, we have cut so many things on and that's where I promise you with a doll head, if you do it right, you start from long, medium, lob, going into all the different layers, all the different face framings in a longer way, and then just keep working closer to the head. You could put so many haircuts on this one doll and get a lot of practice out of it. And as you can see, here's our center section. So that can be sectioned away. And I can, um, I like to work with damp or really wet hair because you can stay more organized and you can see your sections on the head shape better and it's easier to manipulate. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and as you saw that previous section, I'm not gonna drop my elevation, bring my elevation back up over the section, but that, that's now we're rounding off a previous square haircut. And then you continue to travel upward do not drop your elevation, and you can see your guide from your previous section. And if you literally just copy that previous section, you have your guide for your next section. And every time I'm done, I like to take it, comb it out, and see how everything's laying. And if you notice, like I can show it closer, you're seeing all the layers are nice and rounded now. And so that is kind of taking on more on the shape of the head instead of what we've talked about previous and other haircuts is how we're going off the shape of the head. This time we're taking on the shape of the head and that's causing a round layer instead of a square layer. All right. If you have any questions, very helpful. Thank you, Melissa. If there's any questions, I would love to try and answer them. The thing that you will notice, I try to stay out of your way. I don't have the fancy cameras. We're doing the fun live and we're going organic. So what we wanna do again is start from the bottom and you can see I had a previous square cut and I'm bringing it, my fingers all the way to the bottom now my square cut from previous is getting rounded. And then you wanna make sure you follow. Stay elevated, don't drop your hand like that. Stay out here. And, and keep concentration on what it is that you did previous. And you're literally duplicating when you go all the way back to when you started your haircut you're duplicating the exact thing you did here. You're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going into, I'm taking really thin sections and I promise you, the thinner the sections you take, the more control you have and the more precise and clean and exact is gonna be your end result. I'm trying to stay out of your way, but I'm telling you in the future, when you're doing it or when I do it behind the chair, I stay in front of my work, but I'm literally standing off to the side. If I stood in front of my work, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. I highly recommend you follow your work around the head because you need to see or you otherwise will drag your angles back. So you wanna keep them directed straight out. We're doing a diagonal section we're pulling the hair straight out 90 from the head and the finger angle is not a 90 it's a 45 it's a 45 straight over that section only i'm not worrying about any other part of the head i'm not worrying about any other section just that one so i'm even going to cut this in half to show you because i really want to make sure 
that we are getting all the bottom hairs and everything blends all the way from the bottom up to the top. And traditionally, you know, most people are like, can I start that from the back? Sure. But this is the type of haircut you can do all you can do anything you want with things. You can start from the back and the front, but this is the type of cut where I'm setting the angle and so I started from the front and went to the back. So I've I've had where everyone um, asks many questions on why you would start from the front. So I'm trying to think of things that would be asked normally in a class. And that seems to be a big one, is they want to know why I'm starting from the front and working my way back. That just helps me create that round layer and that pixie haircut that I'm, I'm trying to achieve. Well, that I'm going to achieve. So now, let me do this last little section and see the previous cut right there. It was square and I just slightly rounded what was left and I'm directing it straight out to me, straight over my section, and then I keep subsectioning as I go up, and I try to keep it between the tips and my knuckle. I don't, I'm trying not to get greedy, and especially in this haircut. There's some haircuts where I will get greedy. I do it all the time, and it is okay, but this one in particular, you want to be able to, see I missed a little piece right there. You want to be able to stay consistent and precise because the closer you get to the head, the, it's even more important to have the precision. And what I can do before we sign out today, this is a round layer. It's going into a pixie short haircut. The closer you get to the head, the even more precise. I mean, I always try to be precise, but even more precise is what we need, more precision. And you can see now it kind of softens and goes all the way around here. And before I sign off, and we kept some length here, and I want, it's very important to remember if you want to keep length and softness, just start off by directing it back. When you let it go and it falls forward, you'll create the length that you need there. And then once, we'll do this, we'll, we'll texturize um, the, We'll not texturize. We'll point cut around the ear area on today's Thursday. So we'll do that on Monday and I will get into the back crown section and then I'll connect the crown to the front section. And so basically the entire haircut, you only did three sections that you have to worry about, which I'm all into simplicity. I'm all into having a plan and executing that plan. But what's super important, the closer you go to the head shape, because it's you in relationship to the head shape, right? So you're cutting the hair, so there's head shape, and that head shape is really important for you to assess the shape of the head, because sometimes one side will be fuller than the other, and then the patterns of the hair that grows on the head. Super important to check that out, especially in these areas and the nape of the neck and the temples and sideburns because this is where there ends up being sometimes one side, well most of the time, one side really grows back and one side really grows forward. So it's kind of fun. You can play with that and sometimes they have a strong cowlick that swings from one side to the other. One of my sons has that. So you can utilize that and his haircut to get creative and or you can work against it to make it balance left to right so it becomes more even. So that was my savvy sips for today and we will continue this haircut and little bite sizes at a time so that it's easy to digest and I highly recommend you go do this step and I'll see you again on Monday and we'll do the whole top section connecting the top to the bottom and the back to the front. Okay? Everyone enjoy this beautiful day. Every day is a beautiful day and we got to make the best of it and I'm all into not conforming. I'm going to transform and this is our time that we never ever usually have to really focus on our skill set and our mindset. And no matter what's going on around us, we can choose 
healthy thoughts and we can choose healthy things, which is exercising or going for a walk or having a glass of wine with a friend. I think that it's very important that we take care of mental health, our physical health, and just enjoy this time. And pretty soon, we're going to be back behind the chair. Enjoy your day. I'll see you on Monday at 12 o'clock.